Hey, today is the day I finally get to put together an A8 Pico cart for, well, the Atari 8-bit computers uh, using a Pico board, lets you plug in USB to your regular computer, regular computer, and go ahead and uh, run some ROMs on your Atari 8-bit. And I swear, I just realized I did not try to color match this with my shirt. So, sorry, or not, I don't know. Okay, I've got the soldering iron going. Got my safety glasses on. Uh, many, many years of solder spurting never hurt my eyes uh, that I'm aware of. And uh, hopefully never will again. So uh, the Atari A8 Pico carts. Uh, it's a project. I'll put the, the GitHub link up on the description here. And it's, uh, it's well, when you have the parts, it's pretty easy to put together. I, uh, I got turned on by this from uh, Rob Sherman of Southern Amos or Atari BBS, depending on where you find them. Uh, we were at the Vintage Computer Festival here in uh, Southern California, VCF SoCal, and he had one of these. And I, th I hadn't seen one in person before. I thought it was pretty cool and I wanted to get one to try it out. Uh, I went on eBay where I usually go for a lot of stuff. And you can find them on there. As you can see in the down shot here, you'll find these on there soon. I was just going to buy one. And then somebody had the parts to solder together yourself. You know, of course, save a little money. But I just like soldering. It's fun. You get into it. Uh, but it was in England and uh, or part of the UK. And it was $8 to, for shipping, but they had nine of them. And with combined shipping, it brought it down uh, to about 12 bucks for all nine. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll solder all nine together uh, and uh, go ahead and sell the rest of eBay, just like this gentleman. Because usually uh, you can order these cards, uh, you know, PCB way. Uh, if you go to the GitHub link, you'll find the files for that. And then you have to order a minimum and somebody will sell their extras. And then, well, I bought his extras so that I could solder them together and keep a couple and then sell those. So uh, as you can see here, I've got uh, plenty to work with. Uh, I'm just going to solder one on the video here today. You need a couple of headers and a switch and the PC board and the Raspberry Pi Pico clone. And they say this is the purple clone, and there's some iterations of that. But you want not the regular Pico because the P this Pico clone has some extra GPIO pins, general purpose IO pins, that is needed for this project to work. So you have to get that, and then the board, and you solder it together, you'll be all good. Or buy one online, and you'll end up with one of these. So what I'm going to do. It's always fun figuring out how you're going to solder on the headers and stuff. If I just put this on this board and just solder it, if you look here in the down shot, the header can, you know, move when you solder it. So you really want to place it in something uh, like a breadboard or something to keep them in line. Luckily, what we can do here is we have the board for here. I'm going to put these in there. So they're all lined up nice. They're always, if I solder them in place, they're going to fit in place, right? Now, I'm going to solder the top part first, but if I put it down, it's going to push it out. So I'm going to move this board, my mat, over a little bit. And what we're going to do is these pins go in the little well here, and this sits so nice. So let me double check a couple things. First off, this iteration of this project, this needs to go on the back side of this board. So if you look at the board, if you... Uh, bought parts, had them made, you'll see it says this side, top, front. So this is the front. If you were to plug it into your Atari 8-bit, the keyboard would be here, or the top if it's in an Atari uh, XE as opposed to XL. So this needs to go on the back side for this iteration of this board. So this side, top, front means this needs to go on the back. And if you see on the board, it says USB down that way and that's how I've got it so now that we're gonna solder this in the right way 
Let me triple check this side front. Okay, so it's gonna go like this with the keyboard here. We'll get to it again later, but just the note, the switch goes on the other side in this iteration. We'll speed up the soldering here. Now you can use flux to get this to flow better, but I tend not to, because then you gotta clean all that up. I think what I'll try when I go to sell uh, the rest of these, uh, I'll sell them on eBay. Uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, check the link in the description. Of course, I've only got so many, so eventually, you know, that link won't work anymore. But uh, this one that I'm soldering on camera, I'll go ahead and put that up for auction if any supporters of the channel want the board that was done in the video. For those that want to solder but haven't done a bunch of it, I find that these little projects are good for the uh, for beginners. There's not much you can go wrong here. Obviously, you don't want to overheat what you're soldering, and these pins are pretty long and do act like a big heat sink. But to put this together, you don't need any surface mount experience. It's just soldering pins together. Speaking of soldering, the vintage computer festivals around the country, a number of them will have little soldering classes. I believe, I think I've seen it online at Midwest on some of the videos. The VCF Southwest in Dallas, Texas coming up soon. I believe they, they are having a soldering uh, lesson area. And for the VCF I'm involved with here, the Vintage Computer Festival in Orange County, California, which uh, will be this coming February again, the second one, will be February 2025. I think we're gonna have a soldering uh, session. We need to work out the dynamics on that. You know, we just need to work out where to put it so, you know, somebody drops a soldering iron and doesn't burn a hole in the rug. That's the one thing about soldering is Eventually, you will burn yourself accidentally really quick. Learn not to do that. Now, luckily for me, for this kit or parts that I bought, kit of parts to put together here, the uh, seller already flashed the uh, software, flashed or you know updated the firmware or whatnot on these Pico clones uh, with the 88 Pico cart needed menu software so when you plug this into your computer all you need to do is load on uh, whatever roms you have that you want to use on your atari 8-bit now this particular pico clone has about 16 uh, megabytes on it which nowadays does not sound like a lot but for what you're going to put on here it, it is a lot a little bit of uh, that space is used up for the uh, menu software but beyond that you can put a lot of roms on here depending on what you've got so i've got the top side done so this will still come out of the board of course you can see it's even a little tight in there. It won't come out without a little more force, but that's that's great. Otherwise, I, I'd have to force it in. So it's good to do it like this. So now I can't put this in the well because it's gonna drop down. So I'll put it back on the mat. Let me center that back up there. We'll do the rest of these off camera. Won't bore you with all that. There is an STL 3D print file uh, for a case available if you go to the uh, GitHub page for this. You'll see the files for the uh, printable case. And one of the nice things about, about this design, and if you, when you go to the GitHub, def, definitely just go to the GitHub page. You, you'll want to go there. There's a lot of info. Uh, you'll see there's two designs of this board. One doesn't use a case, and the Pico clone is more horizontal. And that board actually goes on the front uh, of the of the card. Don't get confused when you see that. And then the USB connector is on the right side. But they redesigned it to make the Pika board uh, more vertical, you know, up and down with the USB connector on the bottom. And when you print the 3D case, there's a little notch on the bottom where the card edge is here in the case for the. Uh, USB connector and so it's all hidden you don't see the USB connector on uh, the case you don't need a hole in, in the case for that uh, exposed on the side or top so that's kind of fun uh, the other advantage is you you cannot just a warning here you do not plug in the USB have that connected and then plug it into your Atari 8-bit computer because uh, you can really damage something it wasn't uh, not designed to handle that and there's no reason to do that other than accidentally 
So with this design up and down, it's virtually impossible. You'd have to try really hard to leave the USB cable in and plug it in if you had some funky, funky uh, USB cable. So this is a little bit safer design to avoid that accident. I was just thinking about at our VCF here, uh, VCF SoCal this past February, I picked up uh, somebody else uh, had extra parts for making a uh, final Grom cartridge for the TI-99. And I've already got a fi final Grom cartridge. It, again, I like little soldering projects. I'm like, for the price, I can't not buy it. Some, sometimes these projects, th these aren't products you could just order on Amazon that somebody's going to make, you know, for the next 10 years or something. A lot of these are small projects, small runs, get superseded by something else, or the parts become uh, unavailable to buy because they've been updated and they don't work with the old designs anymore. And so sometimes you got to buy some of these little products or in kit form while they're available, even if you, you're backlogged in what you're doing. Now we just have to put the button on. Now the button is used for resetting the board. So you, you've plugged this in, you've booted up your Atari 8-bit, you've put your ROMs on here uh, prior to that. And you boot it up, you get to the menu list, you pick a ROM, you run the ROM, and now you wanna run uh, perhaps a different game. So there's a reset switch on here that uh, you can press and it freezes the computer. You hit the reset on the computer and it comes back to the menu so that's pretty convenient and when you 3d print the case i mean you can put the switch on either side but when you 3d print the case that's available the hole is right here for it on the front side and it makes more sense to have it on the front so again uh, this is the back side where i soldered the board and so this is the front side for the switch and for the parts i have here the switch can go only only go in uh, uh, up and down as opposed to left. You, you can't put it in wrong is what I'm trying to say. And that holds in, at least my parts hold in pretty good to turn upside down the solder. Oh, you can bend a little more there. That's, yeah, I like that. Get that to stay. Okay, so this is now going to be on the front side for me. Let's solder that in place. Oh, I should have grabbed my OmniFix helping hands. Um, OmniFix, oh... But this is pretty flat. Okay. Well, let's turn that off. Soldering is done. All the parts have been put together. Uh, no extra parts to put in the trunk. Uh, I'll just uh, go ahead and put uh, some ROMs on here. Like I said, the seller already flashed uh, the menu software on here. Uh, loaded the menu software. Just got to put on some ROMs and we'll give it a try. Okay, so we've got our A8 Pico cart here all ready to use. Now I do want to mention first that uh, for the Atari 8-bit computers, if you have an 800XL or 600XL with a little metal flappy doors on it, then um, when you plug this in, it's going to short on those doors. So you're going to want to have a case for this. Uh, again, at the GitHub page, you can get the uh, STL files to 3D print a case, uh, buy a case in line, get a friend to print a case if you've got the, that computer, and or if you just simply want a nice case with it. Uh, let's go ahead and put that aside now. Now, I have here uh, the game Turmoil, because uh, there are no ROMs on this. Uh, and if you want uh, to get your ROMs on there, you got to get them on your computer and move them over uh, with the USB connector. So I've got Turmoil. And with that, I went to uh, atarimania.com where you can uh, find files on there. And I already downloaded it. So I've got the Turmoil ROM file here. And we'll just plug in the USB connector on the A8 Pico cart. And of course, don't put it down on your metal chassis here on your, if your laptop is like that. I'm going to put it over here. Now it shows up as a drive because it's a USB drive device. I'll go ahead and open that up. And here we have the main folder for the A8 Pico cart. Now you can create folders in here so you can organize uh, various ROMs. 
Uh, but for this, I'll just drag over the turmoil ROM. It's copying and it's done. Now, don't forget to eject your USB drive. That is the A8 Pico cart. Okay, that's done. We can unplug this. And let's get this yucky modern computer out of the way. Uh, I've got my Atari uh, GS game system here. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And again, since we don't have a cart that is going to... Uh, cartridge case that is that is going to uh, not let us put this in wrong you want to look at the silk screen because often they'll write on there and as I pointed out earlier in the video this side is the top or the front so you know 130 XC you'd put it in this way because it says top here and for this this is the front uh, I'll bit at, at a 45 degree angle uh, <clears throat> there we go turn it on and there we have the menu. You can use the arrow keys to go up and down, hit enter uh, to run the game. So let's go ahead and do that. And we've got Turmoil. I don't know if you've ever played this. Gotta love the graphics. So, cl so classic. So this is, uh oh, uh, quite a fun uh, I should have got that earlier. Uh, I find uh, this is fun playing this from time to time. It's pretty basic, which, you know, a lot of the fun games are just basic. You just get a little more skill set on them. So there's Turmoil uh, by Cirrus. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is this is the A8 Pico cart that I uh, did on the video. I'm going to put uh, the Vintnerd initials on here, TVN. And I'm going to sell this on eBay. So if you have any interest in supporting the channel, if you want to make a bid on it, uh, and then the other ones that I have to solder together, I'll put those up on eBay as they're uh, available to be sold. Uh, but any support you have for the channel would be great and greatly appreciate it. And if you have any other questions or comments, maybe you've tried this, you've got something else uh, that you've used uh, other than Fujinet and stuff that we all know of, uh, go ahead and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. And uh, let me know uh, uh, if you liked the video. I would really appreciate it. So till next time, thanks. Yeah.